Howdy folks, I'm Trailblazer Tim, welcome to the show. Today we're out at our old base camp in the forest and today's lesson is about how you can go about making a fire in the rain. So you've decided to go out hiking for the day and there's a couple really big important things to keep in mind, especially knowing that there's inclement weather in the area. Now you all heard me do a great deal of talking about the importance of putting up an emergency shelter in a pinch. In this case, we have our base camp up, so I'm not worried about getting wet personally, plus a rain coat. Second of all, I believe is very important, is to bring in some sort of apparatus or material in order for you to at least get some sort of a fire started. Now every time I go out on a hike, I bring my little pack with me and I always have my little tinder box. I'll show you what's inside of here in just a second. But all this is, is nothing more than a tinder box. It's not enough to sustain us to have a nice little fire, especially when we need to dry off after getting rained on or make ourselves something hot to eat. Now if you look closely, everything in this forest is soaking wet. It's been raining for almost 48 hours straight here in Central Florida and we got lots more to come. Thus, I stress on the importance of knowing your geographical layout before you start hiking in blind into any kind of forest. Okay, so before we pull that tinder box out and get our stuff all ready to go, we can do that up underneath the shelter when it's raining. But we need to be finding some wood that is gonna actually catch fire and stay burning in this wet forest. We need to do it now before the rain overcomes us. Now all over here in the forest floor, you see these little twigs and broken branches and stuff like that, which in an ideal situation would be absolutely perfect. But we're not working with ideal situations. This is rain city and everything on the floor of the forest is soaking wet. Now as you're searching around in the forest in the time of need to try to find some sort of wood or accelerant that's gonna work for you, I picked up a small little branch, looks about like that. That'd be a great little piece of wood to put on a small fire just to maintain us. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna bend that. If it snaps right in half right away, it's completely waterlogged. If it has some sort of a snap, still, it's a little bit too wet. We're looking for something that has very little ply to it, that's not green, but still has an inner core that is workable. If I can snap this with my hands without putting it over my knee, it's too wet. You can see that. That's saturated all the way through. We want something as deadfall like this that doesn't have green to it, but it is a hardwood that has managed to keep a core that is dry enough for us to have a fire. Now I found this tree here and it's alive and well, but up here seems to look like there's some dead branches that may end up helping us. Let's see. Oh no, look at that. Snapped off just like that, completely soaking wet. That's not gonna be any good. I just found a branch that looks like it's been down for, I don't know, at least a few months. I don't see anything really growing on it or anything. Some moss just laying around on it. It's still got some pliability to it though, some little saplings, but we may end up being able to cut some of this off here and skin all this down and try to process to the point where maybe we still have a little bit of a chance of getting some wood that'll burn. And I located another piece of deadfall down here. It looks like it's been on the ground for quite some time. Uh, I'm gonna pull it out and bring it back to the shelter. Now the amount of wood you wanna forage all depends on how long you plan on staying at the camp. Is it just until the rain stops? Speaking of rain, it's starting to rain right now. Always try to gather more than what you need. All right, so we had to duck underneath into our little canopy here at the base camp because we just had a little rain squall move through. There's lots more in the area. It's been raining pretty much for the past 48 hours here in Central Florida. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our little bit of wood that we foraged off of the wet forest floor, try to process that as good as we can. Now we're not out to try to make some big campfire or Dakota pit or anything like that. Remember last week I did a video on my Uberlieben collapsible foldable little wood stove. That's gonna work perfect for us to have a little small little contained fire pit to keep us nice and warm and toasty on this cold, wet November afternoon. Yeah, the rain has came back. I'm gonna take some of this deadfall we found on the ground here. As soon as I start shaving this, almost feather sticking it, 
This stuff is nice and dry inside. Just the outer part is just a little damp. You get this processed up just right, then it might be able to take off with that bit of tinder that I brought with me. Now all the stuff that usually looks promising out in these woods to start a fire and stuff are completely useless to me, such as this moss and all that other stuff. Now some of you guys would like to hear about it in the comments, they live in colder regions or areas where uh, birch trees grow. Uh, I know white birch bark is very good tinder and it's self-sustainable for a little while in case you aren't able to bring some sort of tinder into yourself, which you should always do every time you think you're going to be out and caught in some sort of inclement weather. All right, like you saw in my other video, my little Uber Lieben ready to go, left out the crossbars, got a little bit of wood and stuff. We're not planning on doing any cooking or any coffee drinking or stuff like that. This is a true test to find out if I can start a fire out here in the woods after it's rained for 48 hours. In fact, it's still kind of sprinkling. Well, let's see what kind of luck we can have. We're gonna start with a little tiny bit of our dryer lint. Gonna stuff it in here, kind of spread it out just a tiny little bit and all that good stuff. All right, next, like I said, I've got just a tiny little bit of dry tinder in a bag. I don't want to use it all up, but it's got to be something that can catch long enough for us to get something else on. See that? It's got little hairs on it and stuff. I can kind of just fluff that apart a little bit. See that? Get it ready to go. Look at that. Look how nice that fluffs apart. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get that lint started. All right, so unfortunately, I completely forgot my, my flint and steel and my ferro rod and stuff at home, so it's gonna have to be a lighter. But nonetheless, guess what? It's gonna be a fire. I'm hoping. Pray for me. Okay, I see a little bit. Give it just a second. Them little feathers on there. Remember, we're trying to start a fire in a wet forest. Next time, I won't forget my ferro rod and stuff. Come on, baby. We got a little bit of something, not much. We need some more help. I was able to get a couple shavings off of that piece of wood that we found on the floor of the forest. I see a little bit of something. This is gonna be an uphill battle the entire time. Oh, come on, baby. This has been a fight the entire way. For those of you who think that this is so simple and stuff, I'm challenging you all right out there now. Go out in a wet forest where everything's wet and start a fire successfully. No tricks, no smoke and mirrors and stuff. This is all real time. And we're still not out of the gates because we have no coals that have set up yet. This is all just straight burning, so we gotta cross our fingers and keep feeding the fire. Woo hoo! It's always the best bet when you're out here hiking and stuff and you have to make yourself an emergency little fire such as that to stay warm or get yourself a hot beverage in you and stuff. Make sure to bring some sort of apparatus such as a hatchet, an axe, a knife, or in this case a machete. Even a little extra weight is going to pay for itself every time and you'll thank me. Hey, that's all the time we got for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. It's always a great time to be able to come out into the woods, into the forest, and forage for dry, sustainable wood. But in this situation, because we live in Central Florida, which is subtropical and practically a swamp and rainy all the time, this was a survival situation that I wanted to show you and share to you. That way, if you're ever caught out hiking, first of all, have yourself a good, decent shelter to put up quickly. Second of all, bring yourself some dry tinder and a little box from home. That way you can start a fire but then it's up to you to be able to find the correct amount of sustainable wood when the forest is wet. You saw I looked for hard wood, we processed it, got to the center where I knew it was nice and dry, and we had a fire. It wasn't easy, I fought with the thing, but after I got the coals decent enough, it sat there and it burned and was enough to keep me nice and warm on a cold afternoon. Not to mention if I wanted to, I could have cooked food or had something nice to drink. Got any questions, leave them down below. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next adventure. Take care.